Well, hello, hello, hello. I have to say it is so good to be doing this podcast episode today. I uh, took on an interim minister assignment and it kind of swooped in and took all of my attention and I haven't recorded a podcast in two months. So I'm very happy to be here and be back with you. And uh, what I want to talk about today, I've titled this podcast, The Beauty and the Beast of Taking the Road Less Traveled. And yes, it does have to do with getting to and from my latest interim ministry assignment, which is in Bakersfield. So let me do the introduction first, and then we'll dive right into this. So welcome, welcome, welcome to Fearlessly Feral Living, broadcasting to you from the Woogie Ranch out here in the back 40 of Northwestern Nevada, where I'm basically a half an hour away from everything. I always say the nearest gas station and the nearest grocery store, and yes, that's part of it. This podcast is devoted to using new thought principles to ensure successful, creative living. Fearlessly Feral is a focused ministry of Centers for Spiritual Living and devoted to the vision of a world in which everyone lives fearlessly feral, in other words, wild and free. We blend spirituality and psychology to work from the inside out to promote successful long-term living. And our purpose is activating inner self-awareness to live unlimited lives. So let's dive into this podcast, shall we? So as I mentioned, yes, I have an interminister assignment in Center for Spiritual Living, Bakersfield, California. It's about a five or so hour drive, except that the way I like to travel, I like to stop and smell the roses. Although the road I'm traveling on, Highway 395, it's more like stop and see the sights because it is a beautiful highway. 395 meanders down all the way down south, down the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. And it is one of my most favorite drives. I have been known to take this drive just to sightsee and do some other little things, you know, just to take photos and sightsee and relax and get away from it all. So it's a beautiful drive down to Bakersfield. And I looked up a little bit of historical trivia about Highway 395. It was designated 395 in 1939, and it became known also as the Three Flags Highway, because this highway linked Mexico, the U.S., and Canada. The route crosses through California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. So 395 goes from north to south or south to north, and it covers a lot of territory. Where I enter 395 is in Nevada, off of Highway 208 which is about 20 miles south of Gardnerville. And I take 395, typically I take it all the way down until I have to jut off of 395 because it juts east and I want to go west. It juts off of 395, kind of turns into Highway 14, when 14 takes me to Highway 58, which goes up and over to Hatchapi. Now, 58 is a freeway. I'm not fond of freeways. I don't like freeway driving. Like I said, I like to stop and smell the roses. I don't like the trucks on the freeways. I don't like the the speediness of it all. I don't like the don't enjoy the journey. We got to get to the goal and we got to get there right now kind of mentality that seems to be on freeways. I just not fond of freeways. So I'm driving to Bakersfield and I know I've got this last little stretch on 58, but I had discovered that there's another route, the road less traveled. Ha ha. Thus begins my adventure. So the road less traveled is a little highway called 178. Now notice I'm not saying the 178. Oh my God, where did that come from? The 178? Where did that come from? I don't understand that. It's just 178, guys, okay? Anyway, I'll get off my little temper tantrum now. First of all, I've been taking back roads my entire life. I remember once going from San Francisco to Tahoe, 
and I took a detail, detour through Highway 49, which is quite a bit of a detour. But 49 is this windy, curvy, narrow, two-lane road that is a blast to drive. And I just took it one day willy-nilly because I felt like it. I'm constantly turning on roads while saying to myself, gee, I wonder where this goes. I wonder where that goes, this road goes. If I want to turn on a dirt road, I take my truck because I never know what I'm going to encounter out there. And my truck's got, it's, it's raised up pretty high and it's got special tires on it. And I'm not going to get stuck out there. And even if, if I do, I can get myself out. And yeah, so when I go on dirt roads where I don't know where they're going, I take my truck. But yeah, I'm always going on roads. And where does this road go? And I find so many interesting things that way. I find like I find shortcuts, lots of shortcuts. I find amazing sites, beautiful sites, interesting towns. Um, I will quite frequently take a road, as I said, just down an unknown road, just to see what's there. And it's a version, if you've listened to my podcast before, it's a version of what if, which I consider to be a spiritual practice. You know, that what if, if we ask, what if, what if I go here? What if I go there? What if I do this? What if I do that? It's a spiritual practice because we can open ourselves up to possibilities if we play that what if, what if game. Taking the road less traveled means that we usually get to experience things we would not have otherwise experienced. And that's a pretty cool deal in my mind. But the thing about taking roads less traveled is that they also take you into unknown places. And for some, that uncertainty can be disconcerting. So when we take roads less traveled, whether it's metaphorically by playing what if, or whether it's a real road, we need a little bit of courage. We need some faith. And we need faith that all is well, all has always been well, and all will continue to be well, no matter what. And we also need a little bit of a sense of adventure. Well, I have all of that. And I was ready for this highway, it's 178. So I'm traveling down 395 and I've gone through, you know, I'm in California by now. I've gone through Bridgeport, Bishop and the towns of Lone Pine and Big Pine. And I'm ready for 178. I'm ready to see what is this highway gonna bring me? So I turn on 178 and the first thing I notice is it's desolate. There's nothing out there. There's no street signs. You know, the advertisements, the billboards, there's no billboards. There's no overhead wires stringing electricity to and from here and there. There's no, there's no nothing. There's nothing out there. It's desolate. When I first turned on it, there were a couple of cars, but then they went away and I was by myself on this road. And I noticed the scenery first. Oh my God, the scenery was incredible. Um, Joshua trees. I noticed the Joshua trees first and they had recently had a little fire come through there. So there were some um, fire folks just tending to the last little bits of the fire there. But other than that, there was nothing out there. And it was pretty desolate. So I'm, I'm looking at these Joshua trees and I'm thinking, oh, wow, blooming time for them is going to be really pretty. And I'm already thinking, I got to come back through here when it's not quite so warm because there's 104 degrees out. I'm not going to go out on a photo expedition out in that heat. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm over it. I don't do that anymore. But one of these days when I'm making a trip to Bakersfield and it cools down, I'm bringing a camera with me and I'm going to allow some extra time and do a photo expedition on Highway 178. So I'm driving down this road and I start to feel a little anxious. Now, I'll be honest with you, that anxiety, it's a royal pain in the ass. It really is. It's a PTSD thing. It comes up at times. I've learned how to deal with it. I don't know if it's ever gonna go away. It's there, it just is. 
I've learned how to deal with it. So I start to feel a little anxious and I'm like, I don't want this to interfere with my enjoyment of taking this road, this beautiful road where the scenery is so great. So, but I've got it. I've got this anxiety and, you know, there's this voice in there and it says, what if we break down? What if we break down? If we break down, there's something out here. There's no cell service out here. What if we break down? What are you going to do? You can't walk anywhere. It's miles and miles and miles away from anything. And I, I'm like, no, we're not going there. So I did what I usually do when I feel that, which is pause and breathe and reassure that part of myself that is feeling that anxiety. And um, breathe and relax my body because, you know, here's the deal with trauma, you guys. Now, I'm not a trauma expert, but I've researched it a bit and I'm, and I'm using it in my own, for my own stuff. Even if we deal with whatever traumas happened to us when we were younger, even if we deal with it spiritually and emotionally and psychologically, the body still remembers it. And we have this reptilian part of us, this flight or fight thing that goes in, that comes into play. And the body remembers, and it can't tell the difference between a danger that happened years and years and years ago and what it perceives as danger now. So there's ways to get around that. And you stop, I stop and I breathe. And I keep breathing until I can take a deep belly breath. And sometimes that takes a while. And then I consciously notice where there's tension in my body and I relax that. Once I do that, then I can turn my thinking around and reassure myself and, and get back on track. So, yeah, it's, you know, it happens sometimes. It just does. So that's what I do. So I'm cruising down the road. I've gotten over my little anxiety attack. Um, I've done the deal and listened to my, my little frightened self talk. And, you know, I drive a relatively new car. I keep it well-maintained. It's got a reputation, this makeup model of car being extremely reliable. And yet I got this little thing in my head. What if we break down? What if we break down? Blah, 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 blah. And yeah, so it took, it took some work. So I did the work, I began to feel better. I began to enjoy the scenery um, a lot more, you know, and the scenery starting to change and we're rising up in elevation because 395 is kind of down, you know, it's in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada and to get up and over those mountains, to, you have to go up and over those mountains to get to Bakersfield. So whichever way you go, there's still a little mountain to get up and over. It's not the Sierra Nevada anymore, really. There's still some elevation climb. So we start climbing up in elevation. Notice I'm saying we, I'm by myself in the car, but it's we. We start climbing up at elevation. And of course, the geography starts to change and the terrain starts to change. And it's just as beautiful as the Joshua trees, where I'm getting green leafy trees now. And then pretty soon I'm getting pine trees. And it's just gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm feeling this incredible awe and gratitude of being on this road. And it's my favorite kind of road. It's narrow and windy. I wish I would have had my sports car on this road. One of these days, I'm going to take my sports car on that road. It's just a beautiful drive. So I'm driving along and I'm enjoying the scenery and I'm relaxed and it's just beautiful. And I turned down the sound on the book on tape I'm listening to because I really want to sink into this, this experience. I want to be fully and completely mindful of where I'm at and enjoy the countryside and just be there. And I'm really into this road less traveled thing and it's just gorgeous. So I turned down the sound on my book on tape and guess what? I start hearing a thump. And I'm thinking, and the anxiety goes whoosh, back immediately, a thump. What is thumping? And my first thought, okay, guys, maybe some of you can identify with this. Somehow I have damaged my axle and it's getting ready to break. 
And when the axle goes, the car stops and there ain't nothing you're going to do. That's the kind of thinking I had. And I'm like, oh, shit, really? Come on, guys, really? With this again? So I start doing my work again and I get rid of the anxiety. And, uh, and I'm driving along again and I'm enjoying the scenery again. And then Mother Nature calls. Yep, I have to pee. Now, keep in mind, I'm on a deserted road. There's no buildings anywhere. There's no cars anywhere. It's perfectly fine to just pull off the side of the road and it's a four door car. So what I do when I do that is I open the, the two doors on the passenger side of the car, which are opposite, you know, not the driver's side. They're the side farthest from the road. And I squat down in between those two doors. So if anybody does happen to come by, they can't see me. They might be able to see my feet, but that's it. So I go around to the passenger side of the car and I look over and I see that when I had stopped for gas in Bishop, I had forgotten to put my gas cap back on. That's what was causing the thump, guys. It was flying around back there and occasionally thumping up against the side of the car. This is what not being mindful will do to you. It just, you know, just we just space on things. I forgot to put the gas cap on and I know what I was doing at that gas station. I was people watching because I love to people watch. I was people watching and I was so engrossed in watching all these people because where I stopped for gas in, in Bishop, it's a busy gas station and there's always all kinds of wonderful different sorts of people there. And so I like to people watch. So I'm watching the people. I forget to put my gas cap back on and get in the car and off I go. So hundreds of miles down the road, I've, my gas cap's still off. So I put the gas pack cap back on and I close the cover. I do my business. I get back in the car. The anxiety's gone now. No more thump. I did not break my axle. And I'm laughing at myself, guys. I'm out in the middle of nowhere, literally laughing out loud at myself. And this is another thing. When you travel on the road less traveled, it really helps to bring a sense of humor with you, particularly about yourself, because we're human. You know, we're spiritual beings, but we have this human side of us and we make these mistakes and we have these anxieties and, we, you know, we, we get into we get into situations and we get in there pretty much all by ourselves. So ah, I took care of everything. I resumed my trip. It gets even more beautiful on this trip even more beautiful. Pretty soon I get to this lake that's called Lake Isabella. I had no idea there was a lake out there. It's a really pretty little lake. Turns out it's not a really real lake. It's a reservoir, but still it's a lake. It's a nice little lake. Now notice I'm used to Tahoe. Everything else after Tahoe is a little lake. <laughs> I don't care how big it is. It's a nice little lake. So I keep going on the road. There's a few houses around Lake, lake Isabella. There's a gas station or two, you know, there's a little country store, but not, that's about it. And then the road continues and it takes me into what I call the Canyon of Delights. The road gets more windy, it gets narrower, and then there's a river. I found out later, this is the Kern River. It's a big river and it is full of drama. It's got rapids, and then it's got peaceful calm spots and then rapids and then calm spots. And there's these great big, huge boulders and the river goes around the boulders and the rapids and then there's a calm spot. And I'm looking at all this beauty and I'm thinking, oh man, this is incredible. This is the most beautiful river I've ever seen. And I've seen some beautiful rivers. This river is incredible. And I definitely have to go back when it's cooler and bring my camera and maybe even bring my camper trailer and stay there for a little while and just photograph to my heart's content and enjoy all of that beauty. So I'm going through the Canyon of Delights and all of a sudden I'm in Bakersfield. I come out of the Canyon and there's Bakersfield and it's right there. And I'm like, I'm at almost at the end of my trip. All I have to do is find, find the place where I'm staying. 
So I went on this low road less traveled and I had an adventure. And, you know, it's a little bit like life, this trip. We can take the normal, so normal roads and we can get all the normal stuff. We can get the expected stuff. We can go on a normal path and get precisely what we expect. And of course, there's the occasional accident or the occasional life event and causes us the need to take a detour or stop and regroup and heal, you know, stop, grief, do our grief work, forgive a little bit, maybe do whatever it is we need to do to heal when all that stuff happens. You know, we stop on our journey. We stop on our road. Sometimes we have to do that. So it happens whether we're taking the road less traveled or a normal road, that stuff happens. But when we're taking the normal road, we pretty much know where we're going and how we're going to get there. And I don't know about you, but sometimes that feels a little limiting to me. Honestly, it feels a little boring to me sometimes. It's great if that's how you want to live, but I've never been completely satisfied with that. Not all the time. Sometimes I like to take the normal road. I took the normal road my last trip to Bakersfield and it was as expected, <laughs> but I'll take 178 again. I thrive when faced with uncertainty. I don't know about you, but uncertainty is this beautiful place where we jump into creativity. And that's why I thrive there, because I know this is a place where something has disappeared or gone away or is uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen, but see, we have power. Science of Mind tells us we have power. And this is where the creativity piece starts. This is where we get to look at our thinking and change our thoughts if they're not working so well with us. You know, if you're having an anxiety attack, you stop and you breathe. You know, I read something today stop, drop, and pray. It's kind of like that. That's from Kathy Mastrioni. She wrote this month's um, outlines for the global themes um, with Centers for Spiritual Living for the Sunday Talks. It's called Pieces into Peace. And she had this thing there called stop, drop, pray. And I thought, well, that's what I do. You know, I would stop and breathe until I can breathe again. And it is a form of prayer. And I relax and then I move on. So if you like, stop, drop, pray, take it, use it. But And consider what your life would be like if you took the road less traveled every once in a while, either metaphorically or for real. Ask yourself some questions. Do you always like to be certain of what is happening and what will happen? Are you leaving any room for possibilities when you do that? Are you always trying to control everything to such an extent that there is no room for God or anything else to get in there and provide a pleasant surprise for you or elevate you to your next greatest level of living, your next greatest, highest good? I think taking the road less traveled, whether it's metaphorically or a real road, can open our life up to wonderful things that we would not have otherwise been experienced, been exposed to, that wouldn't be possible. I've got that vision of, of that canyon of delights in my mind right now as I talk about it. I've got that vision of that beautiful, dramatic river with those calm places and those rapids. I have all of that. It's a picture in my mind. I wouldn't have done that if I had not taken that road. I have the humor that I felt at myself when I realized that that thump that I was hearing was me forgetting to put the gas cap on because I was concentrating on people watching, having so much fun watching people that I forgot what I was doing. I wasn't paying attention. We have a choice. We can take the road less traveled or not. And when we do that, we've got so much to support us if we've been practicing this teaching called science of mind, if we've been living it. You know, we have a set of practices and principles that are that can guide us and 
and that are our foundation for living. You know, science of mind teaches us to live optimistically. It's that little thing called the law of attraction. That's a principle in science of mind, the law of attraction. Now, if you always think pessimistically, if you believe in Murphy's law that says anything that can possibly go wrong will, if you think the glass is half empty, honestly, I don't recommend that you take the road less traveled because you might get stuck out there. And who knows when there will be another car along to rescue you. I don't recommend it. If you, have, if you base your life in pessimism, I just don't recommend it. Sorry. Change that around. Move to optimism. Move to the glass being half full. Move to, to move from <laughs> negative Nelly and into Pollyanna. Now, I've been accused of being a Pollyanna before, and I got to say, that's fine. I like that. People are like, you're such a Pollyanna. And I'm like, yep, I am. I'm a Pollyanna. Look where I got. Look what I've happened. Look, look at all the experiences I've had. Look at how wonderful life is being and doing that way. So what I recommend is if you move through life and you're kind of pessimistic and you think if there's anything could possibly go wrong, it's going to, and you think the glass is half full or you're one of those cynical folks that says, oh, I'm just going to drink the water. Uh -huh. No, be a Pollyanna. The glass is half full, not half empty. Be a Pollyanna. Believe in optimism. Believe that everything that happens is for our greatest and highest good. That's living in principle. And when you can do that and think that way, then you are free to take the road less traveled willy-nilly till the cows come home and just have a ball with it and open up to all of those beautiful, wonderful experiences. And then when you come out the other end, you'll feel like I did. When I came out the other end of that road, it was literally like a, a sudden pop, like a, trans, a sudden transition. I was in that canyon of delights. And then all of a sudden, boom, canyon is gone. I'm in Bakersfield. And I'm like, wow, this is kind of interesting. And then I felt so accomplished. I did it. I took the road less traveled one more time. And I survived it and I saw wonderful new sights and I experienced wonderful new things and I felt so empowered. That's what taking the road less traveled gets you. So I hope you have enjoyed my little journey down the road less traveled. And I thank you very much for listening. And I am knowing Fearlessly Feral Living for me and for you. And again, Fearlessly Feral Living is a focused ministry of Centers for Spiritual Living. And your support is much appreciated and fully tax deductible. And you can support us in a number of beautiful ways. You can support the, the podcast if you listen to it through Buzzsprout. And I'll put the link in the show notes. There's a little button there that you can click and um, support monthly with a subscription. You can also support it our PayPal page, and you can also check out our website and get all those links at fearlesslyferal.org. So once again, I thank you so much for living, and I hope you take the road less traveled really, really soon. Thank you.